Hello folks, Jonathan Milam here, and I have got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six instruments lined up talking about the dark-er side. Um, I suppose if you really wanted to go massively dark, there are ways to do that, but we're looking at options to uh, give you a dark tone that are within reach for most of us. And I'm going to start off today with a Bach Stradivarius, which is a very common trumpet. This one, fortunately, I've got, it has a tunable bell setup, so I've got a 37 brass bell, but I'm telling you, the 43 bronze is logically a little bit darker. And an even cheaper fix, in fact, considerably cheaper than that, MK Aftermarket Tuning Slide. We've got a dark bronze tuning slide here. And uh, you can see just how dark it is when you look down at the bare metal there. <coughs> now, I'm not going to go with the deepest, darkest mouthpiece that I can because I'm trying to use a mouthpiece that is similar. A trumpet, flugelhorn, cornet, and I've got a pudgy here as well. But um, this is a modest trumpet flugel mouthpiece. It's a very deep V, Trent Austin's T-A-T-F but it doesn't have that large of a throat. I think it's just about a 24, maybe a 23. Really like, however, the sound you can get off this. You can use this, you can play above the staff and um, won't bother you overly. But we're gonna try out with this. Then we'll give another trumpet comparison just to show you, um, even within trumpets, the difference that you can get with your um, different type metals. And then we'll move on to the other instruments. Okay, now again, this is a Strad with the 43 bronze bell, which they put, I believe, on their mariachi horn. Um, now, this is the newest member of the stable. It is a sterling silver plus. Um, supposed to be, I think, 99.9% .9 silver. I've got here a Reeves classical mouthpiece, which is a 7, but it does have a tighter drill to it, a tighter throat, about a 28. And... Um, you going dark with the sterling silver horn, yeah, you you could be facing some difficulties, at least with this sterling silver strap. We'll play that same thing with the Reeves classical 7C mouthpiece and the sterling silver plus bell on a box strap. And again, that bronze bell and bronze tuning slide. To me, definitely a darker timber. Now, you've got horns and really bells do form a big part of the difference. One of the funnest horns I've got, it's a pudgy, whole horn tuning slide, not on the first slide, but uh, actually part of the bell area. And you've got a large, just about a five and a half, one of the last bells that Canstall made, fairly thick taper, not the thickest, but fairly thick. And we're gonna use that same TATF mouthpiece. Now, if you wanna compare these directly and hear them uh, just right, bang, 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 without the talk, if you go down to the comment area, of course, the first line will have any horns that I have for sale. It's very important. 
And I think we'll put a link to Syntex there as well. Great resale brass people. Uh, Clay Collins there. Just a very fine fellow. I've got some great horns from them. And they're wonderful to deal with. And they've got some magnificent uh, opportunities right now. But uh, I'll also put a link to the MK tuning slide, uh, guys. And uh, if you wanted to get a bronze tuning slide, maybe a... Uh, uh, opportunity to darken your horn up a little bit. But anyway, Brent Peters puts this out. Wonderful horn. We're going to use that same Trent Austin TATF, but you've got a very big uh, bronze bell here. Logically, should be just a little bit darker than the trumpet I was playing. I was going to say, if you wanted to compare the sounds, just go down to the bottom area and we'll have all the different uh, horns. You can just go bang, bang, bang from one to the other by clicking on the uh, link there. Now, a cornet differs from a trumpet in that it is a conical instrument. It starts off small and immediately begins getting larger throughout the horn. When you get to the bell, you don't necessarily have a larger bell flare. In fact, this is probably about four and a half inches where the Strad is, actually this bell is five. But if you look, you can see uh, maybe a little larger throat area on the cornet and definitely a larger taper through this area. Now, I wish I could use the same mouthpiece on all of these. But I can't, and the problem, of course, is the flugel. But uh, as I say, I've tried to get mouthpieces that are similar. One of my long-time favorite mouthpieces for a cornet is Mark Curry's VC, or Vintage Cornet. It's, it's got a very nice shape to it, yields a breathy tone, and of course the Olds recording cornet is almost all bronze. They did call it Ray Alloy because it was a specific... Um, Oh, type uh, percent of bronze that they used. But while you do have a little brass on your uh, valve block here, nickel silver, the upper part of the baluster, largely all a bronze horn and a nice, very dark sounding cornet. So we've got an old recording and uh, we'll use Mark Curry's vintage cornet mouthpiece. <coughs> Such a fun horn to play. And of course, when you get into vintage instruments, cornets are so much, <coughs> excuse me, so much more affordable than trumpets. Okay, now I've got a very unique instrument here. It is a box Stradivarius flugelhorn, but it's a 182. They made this, I think, towards the tail end of their Mount Vernon work. And of course, uh, what is this? Uh, this is an Elkhart, but it does have the corporation bell. Quite a um, nice taper on the flugel, but the sound really is not your pure flugel, and I do have a flugel we'll compare it to in just a moment. Um, and you'll have to pardon me. A little masking tape. This horn had a little problem in shipping, and I hadn't been able to get it to a repairman yet. It's out of a line, if you can see that, and it was leaking badly. Thank God for duct tape. Now this 
is a traditional flugel wrap. And you can see the difference between the two. And the sound, well, really what they've got here is a much larger uh, bell area. Where on this one, they just don't have as much room for the large bell. And I think it results in a sound that is more like a cross between a cornet and a trumpet. Of course, I've heard them play, and um, I still wanted it. Uh, intonation is a problem with the 182 model. It seems to be a little sharp at the bottom and flat at the top. And if you do have that, you'll want to know all your alternate fingerings, but at least you've got the intonation to aid here, your first slide, and your third as well. Where most flugelhorns are either a 433 or a 418, 409, something like that, quite a small bore. I believe this is your 460. So it's easy to play. And in fact, I've been playing it quite a bit recently, had a blast with it. Uh, when I pulled out the real flugel, um, gotta say, uh, that takes a little more work than I've been giving it. <laughs> this is easy to play because the bore size is similar to that of a trumpet. The blow is as well. <coughs> Now on this, I'm using a Reeves uh, flugel mouthpiece. Um, relatively, it's not, not Reeves' biggest. Um, I like it for intonation since this is a little tough. And with flugel horns, my experience has been have a lot of different mouthpieces and keep trying until you get the one that works intonation-wise the best with your flugel. It's very hard to say what it's going to be. I don't like to get rid of flugel mouthpieces because... Uh, with a multitude of them, you can usually find something that works well. So we've got the Box Strad 182, a, a relatively shallow Reeves flugel mouthpiece, and we'll try Summertime. While it isn't your deepest and darkest flugel sound, it's a great mix and um, it has its place, as I've said before on a uh, YouTube video here, I think it has its place in the brass family. Now this is a flugelhorn and I'm not a great flugelist. The only thing I've got going for me when I try and get a dark tone is I don't usually fill a horn. I don't have as much air movement. You get a guy that really has a tremendous amount of air movement. They can make a good flugelhorn sound like a trumpet. Not always what you want to do. Uh, a little less wind, although you want consistent wind so that you can project a consistent tone. But that is one way to achieve warmth. Now, since I'm not playing flugel a whole lot, I did find this locally. It is a Dylan flugel and um, for the money I think they start around 475 bucks a killer flugel the valves are fantastic almost certainly patterned after the Yamaha 631 731 I've had those and if you look at the valve uh, pieces um, quite obviously a close pattern effort and a wonderful job at a fantastic price point. Dylan, if you look Dylan Brass, I'm not sure exactly what the store is, but you'll find it. And they also have a tremendous selection of used horns most often. Okay, with the Dylan Flugel and again with the Reeves uh, Flugel mouthpiece, we'll try Summertime. This one does have the bronze bell as well. They make a brass bell version. I believe this is the bronze bell. Should be just a tad warmer.
Now, just a word about all of these things. If you want to take the simplest way into getting a good, dark sound, it's easy to do that with a mouthpiece. That is the, mo that is the least expensive way. And here we have the best trumpet flugel mouthpiece I've ever found. It is the Reeves C to J huge drill. Now, I'm going to put this in the bronze belt, bronze tuning slide, Stradivarius, and uh, believe me, it is, oh, the king of darkness. Can we say that? We'll play that again with the Trent Austin trumpet flugel, a little shallower, smaller drill. And with the Reeves again. We'll compare real quickly the Dylan flugel to the sound of the trumpet with a deep trumpet flugel mouthpiece. Now, it's a little unfair when you get in a room, you play that flugel, and because of the large taper, large throat, and large bell, you get a huge spread sound. So you feel like it's just coming at you from all angles. I guess if I had some really good mics that I could place at different points of the room, you'd see. When I started playing this trumpet with the trumpet flugel mouthpiece, even though it probably sounds dark when it comes into the mic, at first it sounded like, oh, where did the sound go? Well, it's so focused because of the narrow taper and the smaller bell, it's so focused, you don't get that feedback. But with these flugels, the 182 box dread and the Dylan flugel as well, because of their large throat, large bell, you get such a nice spread. It's, uh, it's just a wonderful sound. All right, folks, this is the darker side. So if you want to darken your tone, easiest thing to do is get a mouthpiece. But if you really want to get that, um, that darker intonation in a thorough way, of course, you've got your bell options. You've got your tuning slide options. I suppose you could alter your lead pipe as well. And uh, you're definitely talking some big bucks there. Maybe it's just easier to... Uh, Look for a good old recording, which gets a nice dark sound. Or, Brent Peters is still making the marvelous pudgy. Fun horn to play. And if you're lucky enough, maybe you can snag a box Strat 182. I'm not sure yours will need the masking or the duct tape. But, uh, and again, a wonderful option money-wise is the Dylan Flugel. At, I still believe, a little under $500. Remarkable frankly. Okay, folks, as always, hope you're having a good day. Do take care of yourself and someone near you.